what is up guys, PK here, and in today's video, part 2 of the Best in Slot series. Now, today we're gonna be talking about Ranger gear. Now, for the sake of short, convenient videos, I have cut the next gear up into a spear and bow, and we're gonna make a different video about the rapier and musket, despite the fact that you can very well use the rapier with the bow as well, or the spear with the musket, although that's a bit more finicky to argue for, but in any case, today we're going to be focusing on the spear and the bow, as well as, of course, all the gear pieces and jewelry that come along with it. So, without further ado, actually one more at, at the thing. If you're wondering, PK, what the hell have you been doing? I may or may not have accidentally bumped my head into like the kitchen counter table door thingy. Yeah, I... I have not converted to Hinduism, my friend. I am simply, <laughs> I am simply stupid and punch my head. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to it. So, first things first, Monarch's Bluff. I have here prepared every single good bow drop in the game, as well as all of the relevant spear drops. So, let's take a look and see what we got. First things first, we have the classic, the El Clasico, the Lazarus bow. This is widely considered to be the go-to PvP bow drop, right? So you could argue that it's not a perfect best in slot, but it's about as close as you're gonna get for a free item that can drop in a dungeon. And in this case, it drops from Lazarus Instrumentality uh, from the Midway Bus Scylla. So Lazarus Bow, great all around PvP bow. Then we have the best in slot PvE bow, in my opinion, the Inherent Truth. Now, as it so happens, it drops in the exact same dungeon, but from the final boss Chartis. The reason this is a really good PvE bow as opposed to PvP is, for the most part, due to Refreshing Move. Now, Refreshing Move is an absolutely amazing perk, in particular for PvE, because of the stationary targets. That allows you to do a bunch of different things. Uh, like the split arrow trick, although that's going to be changed to explosive arrow. But nonetheless, the stationary target is going to allow you to cast a lot more spells and just all around deal more damage because you can just constantly pump out your abilities. Moving on, we have the Black Gods bow. Keen, plague crits, keenly empowered. Some people prefer using this bow for wars due to the plate crits. Uh, but it's a good bow. It drops in the Tempest Dungeon from Usret. That's the bruiser behind the locked door. Same guy that drops the Black God's Hammer, I believe. Moving on, we have the Wayward Threat. Keen, refreshing move and refreshing evasion. Also a pretty decent all-around bow. It's a slightly worse version of the Inherent Truth, essentially. Uh, this one drops in Tempest from uh, Isabella's midway fight. I believe it's the final Isabella encounter that isn't the final boss. Then we have the Tempest Call. Now, the Tempest Call, Keen, Chain, Lightning, Enchanted, not the best bow. I honestly just included it because I had it, and I was like, you know, I want to show off all my legendary bows. So, <laughs> it drops in Dynasty Shipyard Mutated from Zhao Taiying. Plus, that's an amazing name. Zhao Taiying. Anyways, you'd think it drops in Tempest because Tempest Call, but it doesn't. Huh, full of surprises. Bow of the Enchantress. Now, this one drops in Dynasty Mutated as well, exclusively in Mutated. Uh, but it drops from any minion in the dungeon, so the drop rate is fairly easy. Uh, vicious, refreshing, and enchanted. It's a good mixture of damage and refreshing, so a decent all-around bow. Then we have the creeping recurve right here. Keen, keen eject, chain nature. You're likely to come across this since it drops in Genesis from Taxodius. So fairly easy to obtain, not as strong either. Although it has a slight advantage versus a mutated because of the chain nature. So it's, it's, you know, it's not a terrible bow, also not an amazing bow. Then we got the Warpwood, Enfeebling Poison Shot, Vorpal, and Keen Dejacked. Now, this is not a drop, this is a craftable item that requires, I believe, 200 in engineering to craft, but the materials are fairly easy to come by, uh, reasonably at least. So this might be stronger, or it is going to be stronger in the new patch due to the Enfeebling Poison Shot being on the bow, which is then going to get a buff. It is a decent all-around bow, and it's easy to obtain, if you're actually crafting your own ammo as you're playing with the bow, then eventually you're going to get to a point where you're 200 engineering anyways. Then we have the Bowman's Pride. This is the PvP reward track drop, Vicious, Keenly Empowered, and Penetrating Headshot. Now, it is my understanding and experience that Penetrating Headshot is not that strong, in particular not for bows. If a case could be made, I'd say it's probably better for muskets, but even for muskets, it's not an amazing perk. So it is another 2 out of 3 perk situation, but I thought I'd include it nonetheless. Moving on to spears. We have the Javelin of Dryadic Empowerment. This is your go-to PvP spear. 
uh, keen, vicious and keenly empowered, it drops in Garden of Genesis from the Blighted Greenskeeper. Then we have the Farseer Spear. Dexterity, Strength, Keen, Vicious and Enchanted. This can be used in combination with the Hatchet, so the Strength doesn't actually bother you. Also in the new patch, I believe, it's actually going to give more stats because it has a combination of Dexterity and Strength. So essentially, items that give two different stats are going to give you more total stats in the new patch. Excluding Constitution, as I understand it, right? Otherwise, everyone would want to be running their primary stat and Constitution. So I'm pretty sure they excluded that. But when you run two different uh, damage stats like Dexterity and Strength, it actually is going to add up to a total of more. Now, the Fasia Spear drops in Dynasty Mutated from Oro, Joven, and Isabella. That's three named minions slash boss. Then we have the Spear of the Outer Isles. Uh, a great taunting spear, which is also going to be buffed in the new patch due to the keen vault kick being on the actual weapon, refreshing move, lifesteal, constitution. Uh, now this spear drops from Lazarus, from the final boss Chardis, so reasonably easy to obtain. Then we have the Black God Spear, keen, thwart encounter, keenly jabbed, good to counter bruisers, pure dex piece, decent, drops in Tempest from the crewman Alvaro or Cutthroat Eduardo. So, uh, yeah. Pretty decent. Lastly, there's the uh, the Frontline Point, which is a PvP reward track spear that just hasn't dropped for me. It's not amazing either. It's decent. It has Vicious, Keenly Empowered, and Penetrating Backstabs, which is alright. You know, not a terrible spear, but also not a perfect best-in-slot. So, those are the weapons. With that said, let's move on to the jewelry. Now, here's the thing about jewelry. There are only three legendary pure dex amulets in the game. One of which is actually unobtainable, another one of which can only drop in 490 gear score, and lastly we have the Amulet of Seven Seasons. Now, obviously this is not the amulet you want to go for. I just thought I would include that to let you know that there are not really any good pure dex piece drops of amulets. So, exclusion. <laughs> Then, of course, we have the Champion's Amulet. Now, the Champion's Amulet is the PvP reward track drop, health, stamina recovery. The stamina recovery here is really, really good. When you're hit below 50% stamina, you gain 95 stamina, essentially filling it up, uh, which is pretty decent, especially for a bow user, because you're going to be dodging a lot whilst you're shooting. Not perfect, but decent. Works in combination with the Shirking in power. That means you're going to have a good uh, bow versus bow slash bow versus musket uh, capability. So it's, it's a decent all-around drop. Then we have the Eye in the Abyss, Health, Purify, and unfortunately Nature Protection. But since we're lacking in good Dex Amulets, I thought I would include it. Included it in the previous video as well. This drops from uh, Leviathan in the Deep, which is the final big guy boss up in the, uh, the Scorched Mines. Then we have another drop, which I don't have, called the Diamond Heart, which also drops in the Scorched Mines, but from all of the general minions, which has Divine Purify and Nature Protection. So almost identical to Eye in the Abyss, very similar piece, both of them drops in the mines. Then moving on to the ring. Now, the go-to ring is going to be the Featherweight Ring. Now, the Featherweight Ring drops in Lazarus from Jardis, the final boss. Refreshing, hardy, keen awareness, pure dex piece, great all-around ring. Then we have the Champion's Ring. Now, the Champion's Ring is pretty much identical to this ring, except it has keen instead of refreshing. Right, so Keen, Hardy, and Invigorated Punishment, good piece from the PvP reward track. Obviously, hard to obtain because you don't know if you're going to get lucky. Could also be super easy to obtain. You could get it on track 5, you could get it on track 50, right? You're not going to know that, so that can make it hard to farm in practice, but in principle, it should be possible to obtain. Then we have the Reinforced Tempestious Ring of the Rangers, which I don't have. It has bloodletting, thrust damage, and leeching, which is a good range to range ring, but it only drops in the cache, essentially the little case you get for finishing this quest line up here and doing Tempest dungeons, right? So don't let it fool you, despite the fact that it's called Ring of the Ranger at the end, reinforced Tempestious Ring of the Ranger, then it is actually a named and upgradable piece. Now, I'm pretty sure I had this ring and salvaged it because I assumed it was not a name piece because of the Ring of the Ranger, which normally is a name line that excludes it for the most part for being a name piece, but it turns out it isn't. <laughs> Lastly, but not leastly, we have a ring called Gash, which I don't have either, but it has Bloodletting, Keen, and Hardy. 
right? So very similar to the featherweight ring, but instead of having refreshing, it has bloodletting, which is essentially bleed. Uh, gash drops from a guy named Bornvarn here in Eppenscale, right here. So if you want to farm that, that's where you're going to do that. Moving on to the earrings. We have the Hardened Tear of Avaris. Now, this one drops in the Eternal Pool Arena from the actual chest drop. Refreshing Toast, Regenerating, and Purifying Toast. A good all-around dex piece. Nothing wrong with this one. Then we have the Bloodline Curse. Earring, Refreshing, Refreshing Toast, and Duplicating Toast. Not as good as the Hardened Tear of Avaris. However, the Bloodline Curse Earring drops from Dynasty Mutated from either Oro, Joven, or Isabella. So you could argue it's actually harder to obtain in a sense. I thought I'd include it nonetheless. Then we have the Champion's Earring, Refreshing, Refreshing Toast, Regenerating. This is the PvP Reward Track Drop. That's a good all-around earring. Not perfect, but pretty good. Then we have the Garden's Earring. Now, the thing about the Garden's Earring is it's not a named piece. It is one of those dungeon-specific pieces that drops with two fixed perks, and it has to drop one out of ten times. It'll drop as a 600 if you have the... Uh, the watermark up, of course, then you have a 1 in 10 chance to get it as a legendary, and then you roll on the last perk. Now, as it so happens, I got Refreshing Toast as the last perk, which is arguably one of the most important, if not the most important. Uh, you can see I have another version of it here, which has Mana Toast, right? Which means it's not necessarily viable to farm in this manner. It's a decent starter piece that's easy to obtain. You're almost guaranteed to get a Garden's Earring if you're running enough Genesis, However, getting this particular one is going to be a bit harder. And then we have Reflected Mayhem. Now, I don't have Reflected Mayhem. It drops from Entropy up here in Eden Grove from that, uh, that wolf, tree wolf thingy inside of Malevolence in the very basement. There's this named wolfy dude uh, whose name is uh, Entropy. And he drops, again, an earring called Reflected Mayhem, which has refreshing, purifying toast and refreshing toast. So it's essentially, it's a half combo between the Hardened Tear of Avaris with the Purifying Toast and it has Refreshing Toast. And then it also has, lastly, Refreshing. So that's a really, really good piece. I like having Nimble personally as a bow user, but that's just me. So let's move on to some Ranger gear. Starting out, first things first, we have the Honest Thief's Hat. Now the Honest Thief's Hat drops from Tempest Isabella. Right, so that is the, I believe it's any version, actually, of Isabella, but it could also be that it's only the last one. But I think it's any of the Isabellas in Tempest Dungeon that can drop the Honest Thief's hat and the Honest Thief's shirt, both of which have a bow ability perk, refreshing, elemental aversion, empowering splinter shot, enfeebling poison shot, physical aversion, and refreshing. Now you might be thinking, PK, Honest Thief's hat, empowering splinter shot, who the hell uses empowering splinter shot? Now I used to run it, as a dungeon DPS, but actually they're going to change the whole ability of Splinter Shots to Explosive Arrow. That means, because the ability is being changed, that means the ability perk is also being changed to the Explosive Bow Perk, Ability Perk. So, essentially, I'll read you here, the Splinter Shot ability has a complete rework and is now Explosive Arrow. Explosive Arrow. Fire an arrow that will explode on impact, dealing 50% weapon damage on hit, and an additional 125% weapon damage to all targets within a 2.5 meter radius. Right? Essentially meaning the direct hit is going to be a total of 175% of weapon damage, and then you have the 125% weapon damage in an area around. And then we have the Empowered Splinter Shot perk is going to change to Empowered Explosive Arrow, but the function remains the same essentially meaning that it's going to be an identical perk, but for the explosive arrow, which might very well be a viable choice in the upcoming patch. So, with that out of the way, Honest Thief, two really good pizzas, both of them drop in Tempest from Isabella. Moving on, we have the Tactician set. Now, I have four out of the five Tacticians pieces here, and the one I have not featured is actually worse than all the rest, because for some reason it has corrupted resistance on, but these are four really good filler pieces. There, it's a light set that drops in the Tempest Dungeon. The hat drops from Crewman Ruse. The shirt from High Priest Ifel. The gloves from High Priest Basir. The pants from High Maiden Lai. And these shoes from Hetman Pang. But the shoes are not that great. Uh, but these are essentially four really good filler items 
that you can put in between your ability perk items in whichever slot you see fit, wherever you don't have a crafted piece, right? Maybe you have a decent purple, but you really need a legendary, right? So these have, as you can see, a combination of physical aversion and elemental aversion with refreshing evasion and invigorated. So again, not a best in slot piece, but also not a terrible piece. Again, if you if you're a fresh 60, these are really good pieces, right? Moving on, we have Sinful Glare, refreshing, resilient, and invigorated. No ability perk here. This is a pure dex piece that drops from the Blighted Greenskeeper in Garden of Genesis. And then we have the Isabella's Gaze. Now, the Isabella's Gaze, as you can see on the screen right now, only drops from the final boss Isabella in Tempest, but only in Mutated 10. In other words, it can only drop in M10. Shirking Fortification, Critical Retribution, Refreshing Evasion. Amazing piece. Amazing piece that despite having done M10 Tempest uh, like seven or eight times, it still has not dropped for me, unfortunately. Hopefully, I shall be able to obtain this very, very soon. And then we have another piece, the Unholy Silence of the Ranger. This drops in Merc Guard from the Top Priest Arch Magister Vocus. Refreshing Penetrating Shot, which is not the best ability perk for PvP, Refreshing Evasion, and Resilient. But I thought I'd include it nonetheless. I personally think they should just completely change that ability perk, but that's just me. Anyways, those are the pieces you can get. As far as the Spear perks, you're gonna have to get crafting. I looked up a few and there, there's not really any... It's no really good, tangible pieces with Spear perks on, so for those, you are gonna have to get crafting, or of course use the Auction House. Now, I thought I'd also include another set of decent filler pieces, the PvP reward track pieces. Here you have the Solemn Crown, that's the light set. Now, all of the light set pieces are going to be identical. So the entire set, as you can see, is going to have refreshing, resilient, and shirking heals. And then you have the medium set, which is nearly identical. Instead, it has shirking heals, refreshing evasion, and resilient. So these are, again, two decent filler sets that you can put in wherever you don't have a crafted item, right? Uh, my suggestion would be if you're short on, on cash, I would probably go for one of the chest pieces since they're going to be the most expensive to craft and then go for, you know, ability perks on uh, the gloves and the boots and obtain one of these head pieces with an ability perk and or the Isabella's Gaze if you have gear for M10. But if you have gear to run M10 Tempest, then chances are you're not sitting here like, hmm, PK, what do I really need? So... <laughs> Anyways, these are pretty much the gear pieces I wanted to talk about in today's video. What should we do next? Should we go for the tank sets? Should we go for the mage sets? Or should we get the muskets over with? Who knows? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.